Yo, 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 yo. Chess War. MySubstation.com, people, we all the way on. It's the homie Chad Money in the building. I got Passport with me. Uh-huh. International. Uh-huh. You know him. You know what I mean? It's Poppin' World. What up, what up, what up? Yeah, everybody that's tuned in right now watching live. Um, you know, everybody that'll see it on YouTube. And just, um, everybody everywhere. What's good with you, bro? Man, I'm cooling out, man. Been, uh, been the longest time coming. Yeah, yeah. Anything you want to, um, just scream at the people right off top. You know, anything, um, anywhere they can check you out. Anything you want to let them know. Uh, this some good-ass juice right here. <laughs> this is, uh, some vodka mixed with some kind of juicy Brand substance, <laughs> but... This shit is good. I, I recommend you mix this shit and sell it. Man, shout out to my bartender skills. I didn't even know I had it. <laughs> That's what it is, man. That's all the way what it is. What's uh, what's new? What's new since the um, since since the last time we um we seen and heard from you? Got the single mm-hmm. buzzing right now. Got yeah. the um, got the town on smash. We got a record of uh, somebody lying in this bitch. Mm-hmm. So MTV.com. Yes. The official video. Shout out to MTV showing love. Yeah, it's the, the official video's finished, but uh, we're just waiting a little while to put it out the right, right, right way. Right, right. Um, we linked up with uh, Fuge TV, Much Music, uh, okay. Music Choice. Right. And, uh, of course, up. it's going to be on the MTV.com website, but we need to make sure we get it in the MTV Jam and all that certainly, kind of stuff. Certainly, so. certainly. Right, right. Now, um, shit. Known for your grind, where does um, you know, where does that come from? You know, whether, you know, whether uh, they love you, they hate you, indifferent, you know, um... For years now, your name has been, you know, topic, and um, whether it be, you know, for your grind or for your business, um, just for you personally, where does that come from on both sides? You know, where does the business sense come from to make sure you make shit happen? And then um, just where does the overall grind come from, you know, to just stay on top of some shit, stay doing some shit, you know, keeping your name relevant? You know what the thing is, you know, I grew up in a a household of not having much shit, just like a lot of black people, Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Talk but, uh, you know, my mom's on drugs and all that kind of shit. So we moved around from different houses and all that kind of shit. So mm-hmm. I always grew up with this philosophy and not making sure my kids don't go the way, you know, I grew up to. Some of the, you know, hardships and Indeed. so forth. So, you know, my, my aspect was to, uh, you know, do everything by any means necessary mm-hmm. behind mm-hmm. the scenes mm-hmm. and be rewarded for the things that right. that you do right. much later. You know what I mean? Things that people see in the light right. is just a small representation of mm-hmm. what actually goes mm-hmm. on. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of times, I, and I call people, uh, I call it a uh, look good losing. Right, come on. Because everything you know, a lot of people do is, is just for, for a show. Uh-huh. So, mm-hmm. you know, growing up, I went to high school and grammar school and shit like that for part of my years. I was... The quote unquote bum nigga and all mm-hmm. that kind yeah, of yeah, shit like that. Yeah. And uh, I was just amongst people who really didn't know no better because, you know, right. they had their parents right. and so forth that took care of them mm-hmm. and all that kind of thing. So right. my philosophy grew up. I wasn't really a flashy nigga unless it was part of some kind of business. Right, right, right. But right. today I, I make a lot more money than most people would, would appear to. Mm-hmm. But they 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 wear their quote right. unquote success so, everything they got right, right. say that so, shit all the time that was that was my main focus is, was to build things up and be able to be comfortable personally right. find yourself which who you are where you want to be mm-hmm. accept your your mm-hmm. your uh your negative things about right. you your positive things of which you can improve upon Drop that jewels you know, early whatever. Wait even three minutes in. <laughs> you know, I dig that. I, you know, something I tell people all the time, you know, just about building up your assets, you know, and, and building up your credibility. I mean, you know, a lot of times, especially out here, um, you know, I mean, shit, everybody always got something going on. You know, everybody, like you said, um, what you say, you, uh, uh, man, just everything that you named on, uh, you know, somebody lied, you know. Somebody um, lied. Niggas broke, screaming, and screaming all out on a buddy song, uh-huh. you know, shit like that, so. I mean, I definitely, uh, I definitely see that. Now, let me ask you this: uh, You know, for for the authentic music makers, you know, be it hip hop, pop, R and B, rap, whatever, um, what 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 kind of boat, you know, does that put them in? Or even just just speaking for yourself, what type of boat does that put you in? You know, when you see the broke niggas screaming on the money song mm-hmm. and shit like that, you know, you tell somebody else, yeah, I rap, you know, blase, blase. And I'm talking about maybe somebody from from outside that doesn't know that you're responsible for everybody's mixtape cover or you know everybody's website and shit like that, you know. And they look at you like just a. Uh, I'm not even gonna say that. Do they look at you like just another rapper or just another Buffalo rapper? And if they do, you know how 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 do you shed you know that that stigma, knowing that you are uh, definitely, I guess if the, if there is an elite, you know, or or upper echelon, I guess you know of what's out here, you know, your name is definitely known and mentioned in that. Okay. Well, you know what the thing is, I always say is, uh, 
when you t- speak about credibility or respect and love and everything like that, it boils down to the money. You know what I mean? Right, what, on, do, what, are you, what are you going to speak about and what are you going to do to impress people that's going to get you some paper? Certainly. Certainly. I can't... Uh, Man, say that again. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I can't, you know, give accolades and do things. You know, I've, I've done tracks with, you know, various people mm-hmm, in the music mm-hmm, industry mm-hmm. and I got a check for it. You know what I mean? It wasn't trying to, you know, do some stuff to say, hey, I look good. Look what I did. To do whatever, mm-hmm. whatever. Uh, when I speak about things on somebody lying in this bitch, we got to think about it is we live in a different kind of age of people. These niggas don't know no better. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Right, right. So when we speak about people being real, the new, the real is the new fake. Right. When you start right. talking about that real shit, Come people on. are like, fuck around Scared. with you. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> so now it's defined as what's real to you. Right. Come on. So Come sometimes on. we may call a nigga fake. But he don't understand he being fake because that's real to that individual. Mm-hmm. That's real to that mm-hmm. world or that person. That's real so shit. people who, t- the, the the age of songs, people don't want to hear about you mm-hmm. uh, living in the slums and Come going on. through all Come that on. shit like that. No one wants to relive, that shit is over. you know, <laughs> what the fuck they going through right, right now. Right. That's the reason why they go to the club to escape all right. that bullshit. Mm-hmm. So if they're yelling on the money songs and shit right, right. for that moment, <laughs> they're rich. You yeah. know what I mean? It's about to lie and, to and, this. And, and you come with your real <laughs> shit. Right. You fucking up their, their escape of reality. Come that on. alcohol and all that shit that takes them to being a man. You right. know, when, they, right. when they've when uh, they spent all their money at the end of the week to... You know, buy niggas, expensive clothes niggas, and so uh, forth to impress. Niggas going four ways to pop the rose. What uh-huh. you say? Come on. We don't share a rose. Yeah. <laughs> so that's that's it, man. You know, I, I wanted to, the reason why I created that song was to uh, find something that was an attention grab. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, I have records that I think are ten times better than that right. record. Right. But for the fact that if you're a new artist and you always got to consider yourself a new artist certainly, certainly. until you're able to get on the billboard. Talk that. So... Uh, when I when I came out with this record, I I, had, I always try to come out with a record that's gonna get an impact. Mm-hmm. It has it has to have an immediate impact, no matter who the person right, is. Right, right. So if you're sitting in the club and, and your record and, and they're playing, oh, R.I.P. I just killed the club. Mm-hmm. I, I the club. Come on, Somebody come on. lying in this bitch. Right, right, oh, I right. P, I just killed the club. Come on. Somebody lying in this bitch. Go. You know what I mean? Right. Got you, you start hearing that being mi- mixed in and blent mm-hmm. because it matches the the BPMs and BPMs is right. beats beats per minute mm-hmm. so artists have to find songs that are relevant right, speed wise right. that DJs can mix in the club from one song to another man, so song. much shit that people don't even know and they be like man DJ don't play my record DJ don't support them but man right. you're not going about it the right way yeah. you know if, if the music was mixed and mastered right. the correct way right. that's, that's number bad. one please because you can tell a local song if you're in the club <laughs> you don't have to know about no type of yep. technical yep. part of music yep. it you immediately club, sound different bouncing it don't sound different because they're not talking about the best mm-hmm. topics in the world, but mm-hmm. sonically it's not geared right. The f- the floor stops shaking because it's not enough bass. Come on, come on. Or the vocals start sounding muddy because it's not crispy enough. Come on. And people are knocked out of that trance like, mm-hmm. what the hell is this going on? You know what I mean? Real shit. So speaking with, back with that song, Somebody Lying, I needed to put myself in a club scenario mm-hmm. and I had to speak for other people mm-hmm. that were in that club scenario. Certainly. It might be somebody in there hating. It might be a nigga who really balling in there. Right. But I needed to create the words in their mind that they can say to that person. Right. First off, nigga, where your money at? Right. Your Bugatti looking like a fucking, fucking Pontiac. Pontiac. Uh, Come on. We don't share rosé. <laughs> Fuck y'all doing going four ways. Right. So when, when, when I'm saying these different things in these verses, I'm saying it in a way where it pauses in between the music so people can recollect right. what's going on. I got you. And be able to put them in that, that, that mode. Got you, got you, all the way, got you. Now, um, where does the uh, where, where where does the music education come from? You know, I've had you know previous conversations, which I remember one time even being on the phone with you for damn near three hours. Um, Talk a lot. Just just kicking it, you know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Just just about the music and the business side. Where does where does that come from? And then you know just you know even just you know with like speaking about the BPMs. And I said like for me personally, when I ask people for music, I ask people for service packs. And EPKs, the first thing they say is, what's a service pack? What's an EPK? You know, or what's a mechanical rights? You know, people don't even know what masters are and right. shit like that. You know, where did, where, did, where did your music education come from? And when was the first time that you, that you really got your wake-up call? Like, this is more than just making music. I really need to be educated if I'm going to handle my business. One of the things is, you know, I started doing music at a very, very young age. Mm-hmm. Uh, I started doing the music business part 
at a young age. Um, I was, uh, you know, when I was young, I, I read through all the knowing about the music industry and all those different books, right, 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 right. which they give you some good technical terms, right, but right. there's nowhere near what the real side of the business is. Mm-hmm. Um, I met a mentor when I was 16 years old by the name of DJ JR. Okay. He had a record back in the day called uh, Cuts Like These. That was a national record. Okay. He produced for a couple of national groups. That's what's but uh, I was paying. I had about a, I had $50. I, I f- found him in a phone book. Come on. And I had $50. He had a studio on uh, Bailey. Okay. So I went up in there and I had my little Casio keyboard. And I told him I want to make a whole song with this $50 with the beat. I want to make the beat in here, Come on. record the song, Ambition. and everything in that hour. So he laughed like a motherfucker. I got part of the beat done. I didn't even get a chance to do any vocals or whatever. <laughs> so over the period of time, and he'll, and he'll deny this to this day, I spent a lot of bread with him yeah. before I actually started getting talk. real knowledge yeah, talk and shit. So, you know, I remember spending, you know, I was working at McDonald's. So mm-hmm. I come with my check, and I, I give him $100 out of my check. Right. And I was, uh, he, they start charging me 25 at that time. Right. You know, as as okay. the time moved over, he started giving me 25 an hour. So that gave me four hours. So I'm making a beat. He's showing me how to do the right technical part to the beat and everything. Now he on a full time sleep. Right. So I'm making this beat and he wakes up and I hit him. I said, yo, what do you think about this? He said, nah, that ain't it yet. Yes. And he goes back to sleep. <laughs> so this whole time I just wasted my hundred dollars. Right, right, right. And all I got is the kicks and the snare on right. the beat. You uh-huh. know what I mean? And uh, Man, so experiences you need. Yeah. So after a while, you know, after spending a certain amount of money and being and being um, uh, consistent in the matter, mm-hmm, he mm-hmm. started teaching me about the music industry. His studio had burnt down, and some other things happened with his house or whatever. He had moved it, and I, I didn't hear from him for a mm-hmm, while. Mm-hmm. Then I ran into DJ Shea. Okay. Um, I was still in high school. Um, I remember getting off the bus, going over on Broadway where he was at at the time. And, uh, you know, I was fascinated by all kind of hip-hop. I'm like a student of hip-hop in certainly, Buffalo. Certainly. All the way from uh, Crucial D to the Brotherhood Come Nations to, you know, you know uh, Buffalo Soldiers, the mm-hmm. Malek and Slice, Hoochie Cracker, Rock Bottom, T. Brown, all these different all that. individuals that put mm-hmm. out records. You know, the Unsigned City, I was a fan of those different types of music. Uh, you know, later in my career, me and Che had a disagreement at some point in time that mm-hmm. kind of went kind of nasty but mm-hmm. we were able to have a certain res- amount right, of respect right, right. today Definitely. so you know just, just throughout that time period I was able to get a, a, a big push through some various individuals and so forth and you know I met back up with my mentor and he started training me and real quick so you can go to the next question because I tell you I talk too much right, I, uh, I was able to uh, once I, in, in my learnings literally it was like a, like these shits on this wall here right. there was identifications of people in the music industry who made things happen come on from a tony neal to the core djs right, right, uh, right, tj right. chapman from tj's djs these different various people windy day i've i've been able to create relationships with all these people certainly just by being taught right to say these are the people and i've got on a plane with a dollar fifty in my pocket mm-hmm. going to tallahassee florida to meet tj chapman who found uh, T Pain, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. who uh, manages B.O.B. Right. You know, I remember meeting B.O.B. He was in the back of a record he was telling store. Me. Yep, you know he was what I'm telling saying? me. Uh-huh. So, you know, when I when I look at these different things and stuff like that, uh, I'm sitting in I'm sitting in his office, and uh, so many people are coming back and forth out of the office and shit. I'm like, damn, I'm sitting here for two hours. Right, right, right. Now I told you I got on this plane with a dollar fifty <laughs> in my pocket. Right. I don't know how the fuck I'm getting back. Right. I said, well, shit, I gotta I gotta meet this motherfucker. Just to skip back for just a small story before that, mm-hmm. when my mentor was telling me about these various people, he told me about Tony Neal. You know, he's the CEO of Core mm-hmm, DJ. Mm-hmm. He's one of the one of the largest. Shout uh, out to the homie Tony Neal. One of the largest uh, T Neal DJ organizations. So I said, damn, I gotta get to this homie and shit. Like, how can I get to this dude so I can get some knowledge? So I can build this relationship because right, right, everything right. was based on relationships. Mm. And uh, I looked on. This was a MySpace was popping. Come on. He had a MySpace. Shout out to everybody that was popping on MySpace. Uh-huh. And he had his top ten <laughs> friends on MySpace. Yeah. So I said, well, shit. Let me hit these top ten friends up mm-hmm. to uh, figure out what's up. So I end up inboxing a various amount of people and so forth. And I was like, uh, they had a retreat. And a DJ retreat is where DJs come together and they listen to new music and they talk about various things that are are going on. Mm-hmm. So um, uh, when I hit up all the DJs, state and I was going down there and said I wanted to network and do whatever. I'm not going to say the real code mm-hmm. word. I don't want to mess the game up. Right, but right, 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 right. when I spoke to these individuals, I wasn't... Uh, 
I wasn't getting the right response. Right. So I hit my homie up, uh, which is a cool dude to this day, DJ Dimp, popular okay. DJ out in the world. Uh, I told him, I said, uh, yo, homie, I'm coming down there for such and such. And this is my first time meeting him on MySpace. Mm -hmm. You know, I needed to connect with people. He said, okay, cool. Hit me up when you're down there. So I didn't like that response. I said, <laughs> yo, and I do graphics too. Right, right, yep. And I'm going to tell you, graphic design has been the best thing in the world in my life. Right. I never went to school for it or nothing. I always need graphics. I just couldn't afford to pay niggas for my right, shit. Right, So Come I learned it myself. Talk, talk you know what I mean? Talk. But not just on the point of getting my own stuff done for music. I initially turned it into a business, and that was been my last job for the past eight years. Come on. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I was able to start doing that. graphics on everything. <laughs> so... When I told the dude, I said, yo, I do graphics, you need any help, I got you. And uh, what the hell happened? Um, he's like, okay, cool. He said, yo, I need a mixtape cover done. He gave me the information. I had so many customers. I dropped every last customer, and I did his shit right away and sent it to him. He said, oh, shit, bro. You fast as hell. How much I owe you for this? I said, nothing. He said, what? Hit me back. He said, yo, this is my cell phone number, man. Come on. I got a birthday party coming up. Come on down. So that's what's up. Right. right. I mentioned I'm broke as hell. Right. <laughs> I put the money together Come on. to get to that birthday that party, shit. right? Mm -hmm. Get to the birthday party. You know, uh, now at this time, young nigga, go to the birthday party. Now he got this big weekend thing called Dimp Week. Mm -hmm. So he got, you know, all these different various stars that come out or whatever the case may be. So... I call myself getting car service. You know what I mean? Come on. Uh, I pull up to the club and shit in this little car service thing. Oh, man. Thinking I'm doing Lessons. it big and shit. And uh, I hop out the car and they got fucking monster trucks. Mm -hmm. They got mm -hmm. big vans, everything wrapped up and shit. And people are jumping out with posters, women with promo material. Right, right. I said, damn, these motherfuckers is doing it's it big. It. Right. You know what I'm saying? Oh, now. I told the car service dude to stop right here and I walk up to the park. Right, it looked right. kind of corny. I was coming up. <laughs> so I hit homie and told him I was outside. He came to the door or whatever. Uh, and this is the time when I was fronting like I was from New York City. Mm -hmm, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I didn't want to say I was from Buffalo, right, New York. Man, talk you know that shit. Talk that so shit. So <laughs> I get to the door. I'm trying to reach the homie and shit. It's the dude at the door. He's like, yo. He's like, what's going on? I said, well, you know, I'm on the guest list. I'm from New York. That motherfucker told me. He said, it was a country dude at the door. He said, I don't give a fuck where yes, you're from, yes. boy. I'm from Florida. Right. So it was about 3,000 motherfuckers in line yep. on the other side. <laughs> Normally, I turn up, but I just shut the fuck mm -hmm. up and shit. My man came and shit, so I was able to get in there. So long story short, I ended up going into the event and shit. You know, I had got to the VIP and went backstage. It was Ja Rule, Rick Ross, Trina, mad different various people at that time that was mm -hmm, popping. The mm -hmm. Mickey Mac dude when he had the little come on, yep, show. yep, yep, yep. And uh, <laughs> back. I go backstage and I see uh, the TJ Chapman kid. Yep. I never met these people in my mm -hmm, life, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. I see their pictures on this little FBI wall that we come put on, together come to on. find out who we need to talk to to get into this Real game. Shit. Real so shit. I approached him and I said, "Yo, homie, you know." You know, my name is Future. This was before the other mm -hmm, kid mm -hmm, Future mm -hmm. came out. On, I had to switch my name to Passport if people don't know. Um, I said, yo, my name is Future. It's the original Future right here, uh -huh. people. You ain't hear it from uh, me. Since it's I was truth, 15 though. years old, 15 years and running. Yeah. Um, uh, and I said, yo, you, you're the homie they said they need to talk to. And, uh, you know, I want to sit down and see if we can figure out some business. He said, well, take my number. He figured if you're backstage, that means you're doing, some, mm -hmm, doing something. Mm -hmm. My man, my homie out there got on stage. He said, yo, shout out to my nigga. Future came all the way from New York. Come on. You know, said that in front of the crowd. You know, a nigga like. Yeah, right, right, yeah. right. <laughs> yeah, that's now, me, nigga. I, 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 done, I done bought me a bottle. Right. Knowing damn well, I ain't had the money yeah, for that shit. On. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I bought me a bottle with some cheap ass ro uh, Moet. Yeah. It was some cheap ass shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I got I was, a bottle, though. I ain't know nothing about no champagne. Yeah. but yeah. I, I'm trying to blend <laughs> in and shit. Put my shit up in the air like, yeah, yeah, I mean. So, uh, back to that story of me getting on the plane with a dollar fifty in my pocket because I hit dude up. I say, yo, what's oh, up? Man. I want to meet with you. If you want, I can fly to you like I just had money to fly out. Right, right. Yeah. So, he said, okay, cool. Shit, There's let's link up Monday. So, shit, it's Thursday. I'm like, damn. <laughs> Fuck, dude, with no kayak.com. Right, you right. had to go right to the site at those times, mm -hmm. man. Come so, on. I, I fucking uh, overdrafted on my goddamn bank account to Come pay on. for this ticket. Dollar fifty in my pocket and shit. <laughs> Hungry as fuck. Didn't know how I was getting back, but I know I had to get to this mm -hmm. meeting. 
uh, end up going to Tallahassee, the same dude I had the car service with before I had his number. Mm-hmm. I say, yo, my man, I need a favor. I, I promise you that I'm going to pay you back, but I need you to pick me up from this airport, and I got to get to this meet. Come on. Now, I had no hotel and nothing. On, well, I had a hotel. At, I was in a Real hotel quick, stop you. Steve Jobs, what the fuck did he say? Most people don't get the desired result because they don't ask. Go ahead. Exactly. So... Uh, I had I had him take me to a hotel. It was a mm-hmm. Holiday Inn. I didn't have a hotel room. I just sat in the Come lobby on. until it was time for my <laughs> my meeting. Yes. So when it was time for my meeting and shit, I had him call me, pick me up from the hotel, and take me out to the meeting. Now this is late as hell at night. Uh-huh. I waited till uh, the homie came out. That's respect. He uh he's like yo just wait here. Had a bunch of different meetings. I sat there for about two hours. He's like damn my man, I, I want to meet with you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I needed to go down there and smoke. He's like, you smoke? I was like, nah. You know what I mean? He said, I said, well, shit, let's go. You know what right, I mean? right, right. I couldn't stand weed at the time. Right. I'm in the back seat and shit. Smoke the yeah, fuck out. Me. And this man smoking and everybody uh-huh. talking. He's like, yo, cuz, you, you know, where you from? I said, I'm from New York. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He said, um, what part of New York you from? I said, I'm from Buffalo. <laughs> And this is why I'm I'll never, Buffalo. I'll never not represent my city yep, ever again. Yep. Just Talk for this one shit. simple fact. Yep. When he said, "Oh, you from Buffalo?" Mm-hmm. My grandmother live in Buffalo. She stay on Hutchinson and Midway. Come on. That shit was crazy, my nigga. Right. You never so, know. So you this never to, know. To this, to this point of day, I, I ain't gonna lie. I used to dog my town. Mm-hmm. I used to hate it here. Man, not we being went proud through. We all, we all went through it. You know what I mean. Mm-hmm. And uh, when he told me that, I was like, "Damn, man, that that made me be true to where I'm where I'm from." So everywhere I go, even in all of my pictures and everything, you know, I'm I'm from Buffalo, mm-hmm. New York. You know what I mean? Buffalo. And, and people don't understand why I praise the Bills mm-hmm. and all these various people so much because you got to have pride in your town. And Definitely. if there are people who are older that don't set the trend of right, presidents right, of where right. you're supposed Come to on. go, Come on. you have to step that up and get into that position and start mm-hmm. making those things happen. But yeah, man. go ahead. That was a long ass story. Oh man, shit, it's all good. Yeah. Now let me ask you this. Um, you know, shit like that, being down in Tallahassee, um, you know, being in the hotel lobby with no room, um, you know, the car service dude hitting you on, you know, on, on, on the back end, you know, giving you the ride, seeing B O B in the back of the joint. Um seeing all that coming up, mm-hmm. how 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 did that, you know, shape you from a from a mindset standpoint? And then, like, even now, you know, seeing the, the, the worldwide success of somebody like B.O.B. And even if nobody else knows, you still got to yourself. Right. I know I seen B.O.B. where I saw him. Right. You know, how does that, how, how, how does that, that type of stuff, you know, fuel you to move forward and, you know, fuel you or, or still give you, you know, the, the, I guess, the mindset to know that even if it still takes another 10 years, you yeah, still you, gonna be at you, the top of where you know you. You took be. the words out of my mouth, homie, and I was just about to say that you have to drive your own vehicle. Come on, say it. Again. You, we might, you know, you might be driving a Toyota, and it might be a Maserati next to you, but you don't know what's underneath Come that on. hood. Come on. You know what I'm saying? You don't know if that engine's about to go. Mm-hmm. So I always state, you know, life is like engine. Build your engine first to last. And then you're going to slap paint and rims and beats and all that shit you on after a while. Mm-hmm. Because you've built something that's going to last for a period of time. So I, I, so I put this philosophy together. You have to wait on your own time. That God, God has his time for you. In between that time, you have to consistently do your research. Right. Uh, research is key, The more people. successful you, that you are, the more humble you have Come to on. become. You know what I mean? And, Read. Uh, research. Ask. That's everything. Network. That's everything. And... At that point, that's where, say, with 10 years, if it takes me to be, you know, in my in my late 30s or 40s mm-hmm. before that happens, it's okay because it's to, it's defined as success. Mm-hmm. And what success is, is the act of succeeding. Come on. If you're doing something every day that's towards your goal of success, you're succeeding. Come on. If you're just living and just paying bills and working, mm-hmm. then mm-hmm. you just, you're, you're, you define your success at that moment. That's who you Come are at Come that on. point, so. What's the uh, what's the what's, what's what's the biggest misconception that local artists have of the industry and what it takes to get on? I um, mean, you know, just just from the people that you've spoken to, or even you know the, the things that you see on social networks. You know, be it somebody um you know having local rap beef, or you know somebody jumping on a whole bunch of tracks 
um, you know, remaking tracks with uh, artists that are already on. Somebody spamming the news feed or the timeline, you know. One of the biggest misconceptions, in my opinion, is the uh, two words, getting signed. That is that is the worst mentality yeah. to have in the world. You don't even want to get signed. I mean, the people who yeah. are, there are, there are so many people who are signed every yeah. quarter yeah. that have to fit their quota to. Uh, it's that quote still signed. Right, two, two, on, man. two tax write-offs and all these different various right, things. Right. Um, if you spend more of the time worrying about the money, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? If you're an artist, this is a music business. Mm-hmm. When on. people start talking about support, yo, give me support. Fuck support. Fuck you and your support. I, oh, come on. When somebody say support me, I, I say I'm not supporting that shit. I don't want to support this shit. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. the music business. I'm not buying this kind of juice if they don't taste good. You know what I mean? You want me to support your juice? No, this shit doesn't taste good. Right. But this juice does taste good. <laughs> well, uh, you, you you have to uh, buy, you have to have people buy into things that are good. Come on. Now, when I say that, you have to redefine the definition of, of good. good. Yes. Come on. It's not about the music actually being good because a lot of this shit is bullshit. The last the, the but, last thing it's about is the music. They buying you. You're well, a brand. Yeah. What makes it work is buying into the hype. That it's going somewhere. People listen and want to be around things because they want to attach themselves to on, success. You have to create success. And success is a mind thing. Success is an illusion. Mm-hmm. That's why DJs is not a destination. and, and magazines and all these different people, they say, oh, Kendrick Lamar, Kendrick Lamar, oh, wait for the BT battle. It's all hype mm-hmm. to make illusion for the rest of the world mm-hmm. to implement themselves in it. That's why you see a bunch of different stats that say this, 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 and that. Richard Sherman, the best corner in football. I think he's that very talented. I'm right. not a super football expert. I'm, you know, I'm a, I'm a fan of football. Indeed. Indeed. But he gets the attention because Come he on. places himself out in right. the world right. with some of the things you do. Right. You can look at Stevie Johnson. No one would have thought about Stevie Johnson if he wasn't so vocal on certain things that he's done for people to say, "All right, we need to have Shout him on this show and do that." Shout out to the homie Stevie too. Create your own Mm -hmm. success. Mm -hmm. Create your own illusion. What is real to you? Like I stated earlier, what what you can create, your your faucet, your facet of reality. Come on. on. Why do you think so many uh, many people have a problem getting their message across? Or even, do you even think that that people have a message, you know, or, or... at least from my perspective, you know, and I don't, I don't ever like to take anything I say as gospel. Um, but I mean, at least from from my perspective, it seems like, um, you know, it just it just doesn't happen for a lot of people because they don't really have a message. You know, they have a a, a, a false end game in their head. You know, fucking, I'm gonna be the best whoever. I'm I'm gonna be the best shoestring seller, but I'm gonna be a millionaire next year. Yeah. But they was gonna be a millionaire next year since 2004. Mm-hmm. You know. I mean, where do you where, where do you think that that comes from? I mean, because you have people that that are nice at what they do, you know, people that do great makeup, um, you know, females that take great pictures, you know, the p- people that make great clothes, that make great music, but they just they just can't seem to get their message across, you know, they just can't seem to find the the I guess I, I don't really want to say fan base, but the 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 proper consumer demographic. You, you know, know, one of the main things with this is you have to ask yourself why exactly are you doing doing it? this? Yeah. Yes. I read, a, read, a, read something that said, what got you here won't get you there. And I talked about when I started doing music, I did have initial love for music. Mm-hmm. But one of the reasons making it, because I wanted to be famous. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I was nobody at that time, and I wanted to be somebody. Hear me, so, hear me, hear me. Yeah, music was a way of getting people to say, yo, I, I'm that nigga now. Right, you know right. what I'm saying? So I got to a point where I was like, okay, well, I've done all these different things, and I've I've grown to have respect uh, amongst our local community mm-hmm, of mm-hmm. music, and I've invested thousands of dollars yes. into these various artists and, you know, Diddy of my city and all that come stuff on, I on, claimed. But I wasn't making any money. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, I was making noise, but I wasn't making money. So I got to a point where I erased all of that. Mm-hmm. And everything that I decided to do, it had to get to a point where it was going to reach a certain dollar amount. Or a certain wave of success in that aspect. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So when people are like, "Yo, why the video ain't out right now?" Right. Or because they don't fucking. Where's the rest out. of the music and all that? Mm-hmm. I don't give a fuck right. until it's right. able to make some right. money oh, off of it. That shit. So they may wait till June before the right. shit comes out. But when it does come out, we're able to do certain things that 
that makes a certain amount of money. I mean, she, and, and, and shout out to eighty nine point five in Oakland. They actually okay. playing my record every Oakland, day uh, out there, mm -hmm. and uh, I just did a morning show with their with a record at an FM stadium okay. uh, show. And it's just going to be a beauty for me to actually go out there and people in that city actually know my record right, right. and they're saying the words to it. But that comes from doing work behind the scenes when nobody's actually around. See, when we're talking about being successful Come and doing on, these different things, we fail to do the things that people don't see you do. You know what I mean? And, and when you do so much shit in the behind the scenes, it's impossible for it not to come out right, to the light. Right, right, it, it, It's just it's, it's just in a room that's ready to. to burst out. It has to. So when it comes out of nowhere, people think that you're just doing it like, oh, that dude is amazing. Mm -hmm. We all have the ability to be successful. Cool. Talk but what shit. we don't have the ability to do is be ambitious and doing things at points in time when we don't want to do it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I think that's what separates the people from being great and people who are just in here on earth as their own placement. I dig that. Now, at what point um, did you feel you were, I'm not going to say like your lowest point, but at what point did you feel that you were the the, the, the furthest away from from your dreams, you know, from, from your end game? And I'm talking about when you actually set, you know, in your mind, you know, when you had the desire and you actually set the goal, I'm going to be this, this, and this, or I'm going to do this, this, you know, after that period, when did you feel like you were the furthest away? Um, well, I just just on what I just stated, mm -hmm. basically what got you here won't get you there. Mm -hmm. The moment I realized why I was doing, because some of us don't even understand why we're doing something. The, the moment I realized nine to five. The moment, <laughs> moment I realized why, and you know, a lot of these people don't want no money. A lot of these people who throw parties and all that kind of stuff, they don't want to get paid. They want to get pussy. You know what I'm saying? Yo, I swear to God, we was just having this conversation in the barbershop. We was just having this no, conversation in the barbershop. So, so the moment I realized that... Um, Don't want to get paid. Want to get pussy. The moment oh. I realized that what I was all the years, the reason why I was doing these different things mm -hmm. and what inspired me, that made me realize I'm nowhere near where I wanted to be Certainly. because I haven't set the precedent Certainly. to be successful in that, in that aspect. Mm -hmm. I, I can tell you, bro, like... I've invested so much money in artists. Some of the artists that you see out here in Buffalo today, I've, I'm, I'm very well responsible for them mm -hmm. to have some sort of limelight of success. But their problem was they thought they knew more than what it was. Now, not to, not, not mm -hmm. to cut you off, but let me just uh, just piggyback right off of that. Um, you know, not, not to say any names, but for the people that you have... Uh, helped you know what i mean not 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 even like guided or consulted but the people that you have actually helped you know Father. Get, get to where they are right now be who they are right now um you know whether they fucking with you right now or you fucking with them or what have you um you know how do those experiences over the years how has that helped you you know have more focus on yourself mm -hmm. you know in in what you're going to do with yourself well you, well, you know what it takes a lot you know after for one, it takes a lot to invest dollars into, into another somebody human else. being. Yes, yes. Because your future is residing on what they come on, do. Come on, come on. And when I've invested in artists at times, I've, I've, you know, I'm not going to mention the artist's name, but I've spent close to twenty three thousand dollars into that particular artist at one point in time. Come on. And it wasn't money that I just had in my, my pocket. One thing about me. I'm not embarrassed about anything I've ever went through. Man, real shit. I'm not embarrassed about any kind of uh, downships or anything because this is what normal people go through. Come on, come on. I got to give you my struggles so you can witness my triumph. Come on. So just to go back through it, I was able to do certain things to Respect. pull money from different places. Mm -hmm. When you when you know I design a website, and somebody might give me fifteen hundred dollars, and I'm taking fourteen hundred dollars of that money and I'm putting it on a person. And I'm depending on that person to do what they need to do. Mm -hmm. And I'm leaving myself with a hundred dollars to piece together the bills and everything because is the I last thing. I believe in you so fucking much. I believe in I believe in the brand. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. the brand is bigger than the individual. The person doesn't even be, be, believe in the brand. Mm -hmm. If you're an artist and your name is Big Dog, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Uh, Jeffrey Jones is Jeffrey Jones. But Big Dog is who Jeffrey Jones right. has to believe in the brand. Come on. You know what I mean? Come on. So when those individuals don't believe in themselves enough 
And they, what they do is they tend to fall back on uh, excuses of why certain All things shouldn't be do time. this. So when it, when an artist comes to me and gives me an excuse stating that, well, this is how Jeezy got on, and this is how Shanti, you don't know how Shanti or Jeezy right, got right, on. Right, right, right. You're, you're gonna you tell me about Dr. Dre finding Eminem's tape in a in, in a garage yeah. when you're wrong. Eight right. Mile Publishing owned Eight Eminem's publishing, and they were able to introduce them to to, to mm-hmm. broker a deal with mm-hmm. Dr. Dre. That's why they were owning publishing. Very rarely do niggas just jump on buses and fall into the lap of somebody. Here's the thing: who... they need a great story. Right. When when a, when an artist tells me, uh, well, you know what? I think we should do American Idol. I think we should do The Voice. No, shut the fuck up. You shouldn't do none of that. Come on. Because you should go get you a fan base of people. Please. If you go ahead and do your research and just Google some of the people who are actually on some of those shows, Mm -hmm. a lot of them already have agents. Mm -hmm. Even if you look at the one artist that was on the show, uh, Shakira was one of the judges. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And if you look at the background, that particular person was signed to the same label Shakira was when they was 18 years old. And they were dropped from the label. But their relationship with another person allowed them to be put into that spotlight. So yeah. when you do these particular shows, they kind of almost know who's going to win. They use this platform mm-hmm. so the America can fall in right, love right, right, right. with these artists as them as they go through. Because mm-hmm. you know as soon as they win, they got the album coming right, out right, right after. Right after. Right it's after. It's already set up. World tour and everything. Right. Mm-hmm. It's already set up for their success because these people... The audience has grown with that person. Oh, I love Fantasia. I want her to win. Come on. That's my bitch. Blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? Nobody buying her hooked on phonics, but they loved all her music. <laughs> they love the story about everything. Mm-hmm. So when it's all said and done, when she wins the competition, oh, I'm buying her CD. But if Fantasia came out with a song and you don't know who she is and where she came from, they don't give a fuck. Come on. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's just platforms when you look at reality TV. Reality TV and all these different things mm-hmm. It's just a step to bring people inside of those people's world So Come the uh, general public can fall in love I dig that Now, um, outside of the music I know, um, you know, you do the graphics I don't know if you still do the website design and what have you But, you know, outside of the music um, You know, where can they find you? Um, you know, where can they find, uh, you know, future? And, 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 and I'm, I'm saying future, you know, just as, as a point of reference of You know, people who were calling you future When future was future you know, so I mean, when they when when they want that person, you know, when they want, not, I mean, I, I don't want to say the real you, you know, man, like to fucking separate who they hear on the music and who. I got a few names life. now. Oh man. Well, well my real name is Farrell Page on, yes. on, on on Facebook. Come I'm okay on. to say my whole uh-huh. name. I don't run from the police or man. nobody, so I'm okay when with that. Farrell took the <laughs> Egypt. Land. But um, and you know, a lot of people don't know that's my real name. Pharaoh is my uh, actual real name. Go, man. Got, you ain't never what's the name. No, you ain't I, never. I got, th- I got that at school. Yeah, okay, I ain't like, okay. I ain't like that I'm shit. about to say, come on. <laughs> they wanted. They I wanted jump on that. They wanted me to up, name my upcoming child Pharaoh. I said, no, that's not gonna happen. Yeah, I gotta yeah, put yeah. them through that. But um, <laughs> Passport is my new stage name. Future, of course, was was that. Uh, so I'm at Passport Future, mm-hmm. uh, Twitter and Instagram. Yes. And YouTube is Passport. Um, you know, YouTube2.com slash Passport. So all those different, you know, various various outlets I'm at. Uh, I do want to fill in. I'm an entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. So if music doesn't work, period, there's always so many different things that work because I do marketing and branding. I have my company, PriceMatchPrint.com. Mm-hmm. Various people Talk going in, get, you know, going in, get your PriceMatchPrint.com. Mm-hmm. If uh, let's see, we strike the match, you, you you bring us the match, we strike the deal. Come on. Um, I got a company called Freedom14.net. That's, that's actually a, a credit repair company. Okay. A real credit repair I did company. I, I did see that. Um, it's, it's a 14-day challenge. Um, I'm actually going to be posting up a video that uh, shows my credit score from a certain period of time and what I did to get my credit up to a certain amount of things mm-hmm. that can mm-hmm. allow you to buy certain things in life. If we look at... Uh, most black people say, you know, white people do this. They don't do that. I don't know where that philosophy comes Stupid from. Stupid ass mindset comes from. Talk that shit. White people are just as broke as black people. Say it again. But say it a fucking good. But they have credit. That's why when you know the credit crisis came, they start killing each other and killing the you kids crazy, and all you know, that. Not even that they have credit. They got fucking credibility and some common sense, you know? Well, it's not always somebody trying to get over on you, somebody trying to hold me down, somebody not trying to see me shine, you know? But, like, 
White people don't talk that shit. White people, you know, very rarely talk about haters. Even Spanish people and, and Chinese people and everything else. I mean, shit, go, go ahead and talk it's that a, shit. So, you know, we ain't got enough time in the show to go through all that <laughs> shit. But far as when we, when we speak about credit is if, let, let me give you an example. If I want the new iPhone right. fucking 20, right, you know what right, I mean? Right, right, right. Uh, I have to pay my shit out of pocket because I don't have the credit. So that culture of people has credit and it's been passed down through parents and all kind of morals to have that. So they're easy just to go in there and say, oh, your credit's good. We're going to give you that shit and we're going to pay you on the, let you make payments on it. When we look at their vehicles, they start talking about their shoes and how their cars isn't fancy cars because they can't afford the shit. They can afford a focus because they're only paying $129.99 a month. You know what I mean? It's a 2004 focus. You know a, nigga, a, a nigga getting 300 a week and he paying 489 a month on a fucking whip that he you can't know, afford. A buy here, pay here. Living with his mother. Yeah, that's 2000 girl food six. Stamps. Yeah, yeah. Because you don't have the credit, so you have to have so many high interest rates and certain right, things. Right. And when we pay six or seven hundred dollars for rental and homes, we don't we don't identify that. Uh, you know, a lot of these lenders and so forth is just five percent down. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Some of the homes that we stay in. Basic language, basic language of of just business that people don't even understand. But, that people don't even we're, know. We're afraid to know that right. that information because it just seems too good to be true. Because if fucking you, people was getting laughed at for being on the honor roll. If you buy a house, a lot of these houses in the hood is like twenty to thirty thousand oh, dollars. So I'm gonna give you some simple math. Yeah. If if you had a fifty thousand dollar house and the bank is gonna allow you to do a mortgage on that because you have over a six forty or, or better mm-hmm, uh, score mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and you've maintained a job over a period of time that can um, sustain that mortgage. Right. Uh, for fifty thousand, ten percent is what five thousand. Mm-hmm. Uh, five percent is twenty five hundred. So instead of that, let's go to the auction buy bullshit. Uh, you would put twenty five thousand dollars down on this home and on a mortgage or something like that. You're looking at roughly about $150 a month right. that you're going to pay for your right. mortgage. Right. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So those are a lot of things people don't understand that once you build your credit to a certain period and it's not that hard. I bought me a house. My mortgage is $783. What not, the fuck do you want to do that for? Because Man. it's probably some high-ass interest. Rate. Right. <laughs> um, some of the houses that we actually live in that we pay $600 or $700 into, we actually get those homes for 150 200 dollars right. a month and then of course you have to pay your 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 water and your taxes which is very minimum you know what i mean mm-hmm. uh, i was able to do so many things in my life you know what i mean i've, I've owned a nightclub I've, I've been to germany been to france i've been to so many different Shout places and different different things and stuff in my life because i understood the concept of Money understood the concept of credit and lie, credibility i was feeling you when you went to france i ain't even Appreciate gonna lie I was, I was feeling that shit that definitely was uh, some motivation for me. I was and definitely feeling that a, shit. A, a friend at that time helped me get there. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Here's the point. Credibility is everything. <sighs> you know what I mean? Just because I went somewhere and did something, it's not the fact that I'm balling. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Mm-hmm. It's credibility. You know what I mean? Different situations and different people and positions that allow you to right. do certain right. things. Right. And, and it's not to be like, yo, this is what I can do. Right. I can go here. I can do that. When people start understanding why things work and how things... Mm-hmm. Notice rich people, they don't pay for shit. Ever. They don't pay for meals. They don't pay for drinks. That's why all the corner stores is in the hood. It's a reason for that. They they, they want to target the people who want to show off. Mm-hmm. If you notice rich people, a lot of those times, even some of the football players. I got some football player friends and shit. They're in the club with sweats and shit on. Come on, man. Hair not cut and shit Bill like Gates that. Bill Gates got the same $30 Timex watch for the last 15, 20 years. They just don't give a fuck because they're at a point where they're comfortable. Mm-hmm. They're going to go home and live the way they want to live. Mm-hmm. Their name supersedes anything that people in the general niggas, population Niggas be worth can. all $637 and two ounces of weed they got in their pocket. You know? I mean, so, freedom14.net, yes. pricematchprint.com. Yes. I got a new site called Artist Music Factory. Um, it's the first ever multi uh, multi uh, level marketing company that's, that's around. That's what I wanted the, to ask you about. Go, mo- ahead talk about. go ahead and talk about that. That, uh, that, that, that music MLM you got. Yeah, I, I got that coming out in March. Um, mm-hmm. Basically, what the Artist Music Factory is, it allows artists to uh, join a membership, and uh, there's discounts for mm-hmm. uh, if you if you if you want to get on World Style Hip Hop, 
the, it, you don't pay the normal price that you pay to get on the World Star Hip Hop. Mm-hmm. Uh, as a member of the company, that's that slightly reduced. Uh, we help you get on DoubleXLMag.com with that joint venture. Uh, we help you get on a num- various things. We have an eBay system that allows people to bid on right. various shows, and not just to pay to perform, but you're able to get a certain amount of right, right, uh, right. flyers to promote for yourself. You're able to get a certain amount of tickets and VIP to bring out your different various people. Uh, we're putting people in positions to know exactly about the music industry for one, but also have the resources to be in the music industry come on, come on. because you have to be at the parties. You have to be here. So with your membership package, there are certain uh, discounts off and certain placements that the, the members can earn to be in VIP right, at right, 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 right. ATL's birthday bash, a Funk on. Master Flex event, different various things where all the artists around the, around the country is at where mm-hmm. people are constantly seeing. Mm-hmm. Oh, didn't I see you in Atlanta? Damn, come you on. in L.A. right now? What you do? You know, I was just in Toronto. Come on. And I happen to stay here because cause my my fiance uh wants to be you know close to her mom and everything. So we're we're staying here in Buffalo until the baby's uh, born. Um, uh, but I was in Toronto and I'm you know I'm in places eating and it's a couple that uh just starts speaking to me. Now I might have, my meal might have came up to twenty dollars, which is expensive. You know what I mean? I'm Come cheap on. dude. Come on. But I paid for the placement to get everything because this person that wants to speak to me and say, what do you do? Hey, I do graphic design, branding, marketing. Oh, we own a hotel down the street. Come on. These are people just regular. You wouldn't even know what they do, but they're just friendly. They just talk. Everybody's just talking to somebody Mm -hmm. because if you're here, you do something. something. And that goes back to Mm -hmm. the homie's birthday bash when I was backstage. Come on, come on, come on. And I talked to homie and he said... Yeah, I'm gonna give you a number, number because if you're back here, you must be doing something. If you was outside anywhere else, I'm not giving you shit. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So that's how the music industry works. That's how business works. Putting yourself in position where you're around people who make things happen, and you're able to put yourself, you know, in those circles. And that's the thing that Buffalo lacks: lacks position. Right. I can wrap my ass off, but the man who mops the floor in Atlantic Records is in better position than I am. Say it. Yeah. So that's 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 the key thing is putting yourself in position where you you can get things done at the drop of a hat. Something I always say is uh you know it's not about who you know it's about who knows you. Um and I mean you know for the uh, for the most part um a lot of people think they're known you know in the city as far as the city goes. What would you just uh, you know what would you say? Let's just say that you never made any music you know but just being a a, a vet. Of the Buffalo music scene and Buffalo, you know, just just being in Buffalo and being around the music, what is it, you know, that that you would tell people or that you would offer to somebody? I mean, it's something I tell people all the time is, they sign the niggas that's twelve years old, giving them full recording contracts and everything else. Here you are at thirty four, still talking about download my mixtape. Mm-hmm. You know what? What kind of advice would you give? Um, you know, for the twelve year old or the thirty four year old. Quit. Don't do it. <laughs> now nah, I'm just fucking with you. Now, nah, nah, the advice I would give him. <laughs> now nah, I'm just fucking with you. Uh, the advice I would give is uh, just just research and do everything. Yes, yes, Ask yes. questions and, and find out the real truth about how things came about. Come on. Don't take things for face value because what TV gives you is the product of marketing. Man. You know what I mean? It's what allows you to fall in love with that individual mm-hmm, business, mm-hmm, individual mm-hmm. artist, individual sportcaster, all those different things. Read behind the lines, in between the lines mm-hmm. of things that go on. Come on. If you're not willing to sacrifice your way of life. Say that again. If you're not willing to sacrifice your way of life to get to a certain goal, that means people are going to judge you. People are going to talk shit about you. But it doesn't matter because as long as you know where your map is right. going to lead come on, you. Come on. They're people who are going to cross right back over. Mm-hmm. Allow haters the opportunity to become fans again. You know what I mean? There, there's certain individuals. I had an argument with it. Well, I wouldn't even say it's an argument. I had a Facebook message back and forth with an individual today. You know what I mean? And they might see it today. I just really don't give a fuck. Just today. But uh, Come on. they inbox me and they, uh, they ask me for help. They do graphics and they do websites and so forth. Now, this same individual... Uh, tried to get business from a customer I deal with. So the customer told me, oh, man, he said blah, 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 blah. At the end of the day, I do get irritated by it. Certainly. But certainly, it, 
people don't know no better, so it's not gonna stop my way of life. You know what I'm saying? Now you start fucking on my paper, then you know I turn into another person. But when that person inboxed me for help, I gave him the help. This is where you need to go to get what you need done. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I got no problem helping you out in the future, my man. Just keep it 100 with me. Come on. When anybody, if you're trying to get some kind of business out here in the world, just be a good dude. You know, do good business and shit. People are, you're going to build your own customer base of people. You don't have to mention another man at mm-hmm. all. Ever, you don't have to ever, mention another ever. business at all to get above to where you need to go. Come on. So when you tell people that you were the new future or new passport or whatever you they said, that's not going to get you anywhere mm-hmm. trying to get a couple hundred dollars out right, of somebody. Because right, that right. same person that you're trying to take from and you're asking for information, Come on. that's the same person that still going to help you mm-hmm. if you keep it 100. Right, right. right. You, you are, you're younger, so I'll educate you on, yo, you ain't got to do that, my man. Come you know on. what I'm saying? But you people put themselves out of loop just trying to be greedy. Right, right. And it's not so much about the money. It's about them trying to be the man. man. Right. It's, I, it's, 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 it's very rarely about the money. I remember when I used to do the public speaking in the high schools, um, little nigga, man, he said to me, and I, I'll never forget it, man. You know, and it just, I mean, it, it really, it really, really hit me in my chest. It was, uh, it was about three years ago now, almost. Um, and he was like, uh, you know, he said he don't really care about graduating because, you know, 10 years from now, when you have your reunion, he said, all he cares about is that he was fly. He was getting bitches and that he wasn't a punk. Because when you remember high school, you don't really remember who graduated or who dropped out or who didn't, you know what I mean? You remember who you went to high school with. Maybe you remember, man, they, they was only there until sophomore year. They was only there to, or maybe some of the people that you talked to, you know, you know who dropped out. But he was like, man, he said, when we have our 10 year reunion, if we have one or whatever, you know what they're going to remember? They're going to remember who was a bum. They gonna remember who breath stink. They are gonna remember who didn't get no bitches. They gonna remember who was getting their ass up, who lost the fight, or who couldn't fight. Mm. And I mean, that's where we at with the mindset now. So that's what they're thinking about as far as and, school and, goes. And, you know what the crazy thing is about that statement? Because you when you go to that same reunion, and he was fifteen, he was fifteen, and at he that said same that. reunion, you better be the most successful flyest <laughs> motherfucker on. in that reunion. His mother was probably twenty eight. Because they gonna say, hey. You was a bum. You was a bum. You was broke. Yep. You was this, this, and that. Right. But you rich as hell right now. Right. Or, yo, you was fly as hell. Damn, homie. In high school, you was the man. Come on. Homie. The fuck happened to you? Right. So th- those things are, that I, 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 I was really going to happen to these individuals because it's all about now. It's microwave success. You know what I mean? And I can tell you, I, I don't brag, bro. I, I don't mm-hmm. I don't have to worry about nothing in my life. Right. It, 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 I, I, I'm been, I've been very successful. Um, my, my fiance doesn't have to look a fi- lift a finger while she's pregnant. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You don't have to work or nothing. There, there's I've done and a I'm number happy of things. Because his fiance is my cousin, so I'm I, happy. I've done a num- number of things in my life where I don't have to. I don't have to do nothing Period. in this world right now. But Period. just continue doing my success. No reason. And I can go outside with no haircut. Mm-hmm. My fucking jeans cost twenty dollars. I got on my Come on, on right now. You know right too though. <laughs> but you know. I make more money than a household by myself. Come on, you know what I mean? And I do what shit. I want to do. So my just only advice is, is got to answer live, to nobody. Just live for you. Mm-hmm. Uh, be humble with your success, and and keep trying to push barriers. Don't Certainly. be afraid to be who you are and, and do what you do. No, do what you do because you feel like doing it. That that's your natural feeling to say. You know what? I wanna. You know, I, I paid two hundred dollars for this hoodie right here. Mm-hmm. Normally, if I didn't like it. I wouldn't buy the shit. Come on. You know what Come I'm on. saying? Come on. But do what you want to do because that's how you Period. feel. That's, that's, that's where you want to go and mm-hmm. do it. That's mm-hmm. the only advice I can get anybody trying to be somewhere and do it. I dig that. Um, before we cut up out of here, anything that we, we uh, that we missed that um, that you might want the people to know? Um, you know, anything that uh, that you might have to plug? I know you got the... I uh, got an EP coming out called mm-hmm. One Way Ticket. Talk that shit. You know what I mean? You got, the, um, you got the fashion show coming up too. Fashion right? show, Ink the Runway. Let them know everything. Uh, it's going to be the first ever... Uh, Fashion show in this area. Shout out to the homie Micus. Uh, he does tattoos. He came to me okay. with the idea that he wanted to do a fashion show Ink involving the runway. tattoos. And I said, you know what? Let's let's do it. I'm on board to help you out with it and make it happen. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So what? I can tell you and I can try to, to uh, campaign 
some sort of marketing to say, come out, come out, come out. It's going to be this, this, and that. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, we'll market to the people that's supposed to be marketing to. If you miss this show, it is something that is going to be talked about amongst everybody. So it's just one of those things is you were lucky enough to get the information. Mm -hmm. And you were lucky enough to say, okay, I was a part of that. And then next year, if I wasn't, you know, I'll be able to participate in it. Very simple to the point. Shout out to my my, my team, Bardo Marshall. Those are my homies over there. Shout out to my homie Fado. Shout out to my fiance. Shout out to my homie Louis V. Uh, so many different people I I, mm-hmm. I I could mention. My homie Mike Hill. A bunch of different people I rock with on a regular basis. Uh, Mike, shout out to you. shout out to my home my my whole uh, city Buffalo New York. You know this is this is a point in my life where I want to create history. It ain't so much uh, that I'm trying to be the new Rick James or anything mm-hmm, like mm-hmm, that. Mm-hmm. I just want to set boundaries and want to set borders and and be an inspiration for the next group of people that's gonna come, come after me. And that's a real fact. Being able to do things that are bold, innovative, and be able to take a chance on just doing the inevitable. Come on. Now how, how how much do you feel, or how important do you feel, um, you know, that it is that you, if at least you're not a torch carrier, at the very least you are a gatekeeper, um, you know, to, to what goes on and what is accepted and what is, you know, moving forward for, for it, Buffalo. It's, it, it's a way of living because at the end of the day, you have to breathe and sleep that. You know what I mean? Um, certain people always lose this philosophy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You're born to do certain things. Shit, certain things that come my way that make me go down or make me come up and people may talk some shit or something. I'd be like, yo, at the end of the day, my nigga, this is what's written. At the end of the day, I'm written to do this and I'm written to do that. Mm-hmm. There's nothing in the world you're going to do that's going to stop me from going where I need to go. Right. Because at the end of the day, it's written for that to happen. Mm-hmm. I've went from having thousands of dollars to having zero dollars back to have thousands of dollars. Come on. Because it's at that point where I might have been in right. a, at right. a, a low point. That point was for me to pass something along mm-hmm. to inspire the next person to do whatever they need to do. End of the day... I don't care about general popularity. Come on. It's going to come based on what... Credibility ability over popularity. What I've done all the over time. a period of time and what I have done now is nowhere near what people see in, in eye sight. I dig it. Those things will be revealed to a point after it's already been established for a period of time. Mm-hmm. So as I always stay, you know, the more successful you are, the more humble you are. And try to hide the things that you have going on until the public sees it. Because you have to do it for inspirational right, purposes, right, right, right. not for hating purposes. Don't create your own enemies. I do, you know man. Man. That's real shit. Well, um, man, that's what it is. Um, man, go ahead and um, one more time. Give them your Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, yeah, YouTube, yeah. Uh, I got to stop being on Instagram more, too. I don't even got an Instagram. I wasn't too much more of a picture guy and all that. Right, I'm just right. trying to that's learn all how the it. whole thing go. You know, t- I ain't taking pictures, you know what I mean? But uh, I'm, uh, Instagram is Passport Future. My Twitter is Passport Future. Uh, my Facebook is uh, Passport One or something like that. I don't okay. know one of it. You can look at me at look at me at Feral Passport page, YouTube, bunch of different shit. Freedom fourteen dot net price price match print dot com, mm-hmm. bunch of shit. Come yeah. Um, the runway dot com. Last thing, what's the most rewarding thing that you've uh, that you've done so far? I would say most rewarding thing. Uh, I would say proposing to my fiance and again getting ready to have my baby and Tell being able to stop my family. That's about it. I dig that, man. Well, that's definitely a note to end. Can we on. get some more juice? Cause this is. <laughs> Can we get some more juice? Juice off camera. Mysubstation.com. People, it's chat money. All money ain't good money. I got passport with me. International yeah, yeah. and a motherfucker. I Let's just made it. international or up too. And um, with my long ass interview. Yeah, we out of here, man. Mysubstation.com, people.